en esta segunda jornada, amb els gamers, amb una keynote especial, diferent, molt diferent. Eh, en aquest cas la fem amb dues persones, fins a eh, ahir la vam fer totes i cadascuna de les ponències eren d'una persona. Avui tenim un altre privilegi i és el fet de poder tenir una altra persona que ha vingut a Finlàndia, aquí li agraïm moltíssim que hagi vingut, Kopi Hiltonen. Thank you very much for just coming to Barcelona and being here in Digital 4C. Thank you. Thank you very much. I també tenim el Gerard Fernández. Kopi Hiltonen, perdoneu, és director de l'associació de New Games Film Association de Finlàndia i el Gerard Fernández és el president de Davicat, que és l'associació d'aquí de casa nostra. Us demano que pugeu i, i arrenquem amb la vostra presentació. Moltíssimes gràcies. Hello. Bueno, eh, yo comenzaré presentando eh, yo mateix eh, una mica la meva trayectoria para hacer la introducción de la keynote que, que hablaré. Eh, el, el meu nom, Gerard Fernández. Vaig, eh, el 2001 vaig fundar una de las primeras compañías de videojocs per móviles que van vendre a Digital Chocolate el 2007. Va ser una de las primeras ventas o la primera venta de una empresa de videojocs a, a España. Digital Chocolate era una empresa fundada por Trip Hopkins, Electronic Arts, con una seu eh, muy importante a Finlandia. Y de aquí veo una mica el fet de que tingui ser coneixement de cómo funcionan las cosas allá a Finlandia, después de seis años viatjant cap a la Fusco. Y, y ahora, a este agosto 2013, eh, vaig decidir a un grupet de, de companys de Digital Chocolate, que era moment de tornar a emprendre una aventura. Hem tornat a fundar una nova companyia que es diu Omnidron.net, que pretén fer videojocs també eh, per mòbils i que aquesta setmana hem aconseguit eh, una fita molt important per la indústria dels videojocs, algo que tampoc sol passar molt aquí, aquí a Catalunya ni aquí a Espanya. És, bàsicament no puc donar molts detalls, però hem rebut una muy fuerte inversión. Eh, la fita importante no es el fet de rebre una fuerte inversión, que también, que no hay muchas empresas que sin sacar producto rebin diners eh, de Venture Capital como ho hem fet nosaltres, sino también es la calidad de los inversores, que son inversores mayoritariamente extranjeros, que solen invertir a compañías de la lo cual es una doble fita. Y no es tan importante eso para nosotros, sino es para la industria, donde se sobra la posibilidad de que eh, inversores extranjeros comencen a ver Barcelona como com un punto importante a la industria de los videojocs. ¿no? Feta la introducción, eh, una de las cosas que, eh, que nosotros hemos aprendido eh, durante las nuestras carreras profesionales de videojocs eh, las hemos aprendido de, de Finlandia. ¿no? Y ahora yo creo que, que esta keynote eh, que está muy enfocada en explicar por qué Finlandia a día de hoy es el punto más caliente de la industria de videojocs del mundo. Eh, vaig pensar que era, lo mejor era portar a Copé, que es el, el director de Neo Games, eh, es la persona que más sabe cómo funciona la industria de videojocs a Finlandia y, y que nos explique ahí mateix. ¿no? Para comenzar, ficaremos un vídeo, introducción y, y después pasaré a hacerle cuatro preguntas que os, os animaré después a vosotros preguntar también. Puedo fijar el vídeo, si os plau. Adentro vídeo. No, no, al vídeo. During the last couple of years, the Finnish game industry has become well known around the world thanks to angry winged creatures and barbarian blokes with dense facial hair. Somebody might think that games are a new phenomenon in Finland, but that's not the case. The love story of the game industry in Finland dates back to the early years of home computers. The first commercial products were launched in the mid-80s. The first game developer gatherings were held in the beginning of the 1990s. 
1990s. And the first companies that still exist to this day were established in 1995. Already in 2005, the Finnish game industry employed 900 professionals. The growth has been rapid, and now the industry consists of 2,200 professional game developers and over 180 companies. According to studies, the growth will continue, and industry organizations estimate that in 2020, the headcount will be well over 5,000. Because the game industry is a global business based on IPs and brands, the growth of the turnover has been even faster. In 2013, the Finnish game industry turnover is already 800 million euros, and the 1 billion euro mark is closing rapidly. However, nowadays the game industry is more than just games. The total value of the Finnish game industry to the national economy is estimated to be over 2 billion euros in 2013. The games are still the core, but money also comes from foreign investments, mergers and acquisitions, licensing, and the merchandise business. The Finnish game industry has become part of the global entertainment industry. TechS has supported the Finnish game industry from the very beginning and continues to this day. Finland is the best place in the world to develop games. We want to make sure this stays the same for many years to come. Disculpa una cosa que no us he dit. La conversa, que ara tindran el copi i el general serà en anglès, si necessiteu traducció simultània, al final de la sala hi trobareu per ells. Gràcies. Ok, copi. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And the question is obvious. Why Finland is so hot right now on the video games industry? Well, as you can guess, it's a question our... It's a question I hear quite often. And still I don't have definitive answer answer for your question. But I think that it's, it's a combination of many things. One of, one of them, of course, being, being that in Finland we have quite a long video games culture. The first companies or the first video games were made, made in the beginning of the 80s, so we, we have been doing video games over 30 years. And one of them being, of course, that uh, uh, we have always had this kind of engineering way of approaching things, so quite technical way and in the video games industry where the technology is, is very, very in the very center of, of the production, it, it helps, helps you if you have this kind of approach. And there has been a lot of support, or not a lot of su support, but there has been crucial support from, from government side and now I'm talking mainly about Tekes support, the, the Tekes has been supporting Finnish games industry since 98. And of course, one of the things, uh, this kind of soft values, is that there always has been, and there still is, this kind of col collaboration uh, inside the games industry. So, although there is 200 companies at the moment, 205 to be exact, they still meet and they still discuss and they still share knowledge and they still share information be be between each other. So I think that these are some reasons for it, but of course there has been some changes in the environment also. And now I'm talking about, about digital distribution, uh, utilizing the free-to-play model. And as you know, Nokia is a Finnish company. And actually Nokia had a big role in, in, in this mobile development or the, the developing the Finnish mobile uh, capabilities and things like that. And they are very useful assets at the, at the moment. Okay, so you mentioned before that, uh, that the, the Finnish government is supporting the video games industry through the Tekes. Can, can you explain what is the Tekes and how does it work and um, the quantity, everything? Well, Tekes is the Finnish agency of innovation. It used to be the Finnish uh, funding agency of technology and innovation, but now it's the Finnish funding agency of innovation. And as I said, Tekes has been supporting games industry since 98. I think that the first investments they made uh, were investments to the Max Payne 
uh, remedies Max Payne in '98. Uh, and the had the games industry dedicated pro programs since 2003. And yeah, it's basically uh, I don't know if it's, if it's ev if ever simple when government does something, but it's quite simple in a way that you can apply funding. Uh, you present your application to the, to the Tekes board and then there is a group of games industries, usually there is a group of games industry specialists who basically uh, take a look at the, at the applications and if they, are, if they are eligible and if, there is, if they are actually something, something which can be done and which seems to be, seems to be good idea in that market, market position. And, and then the techers makes makes the decisions. Decisions. This is the uh, bureaucracy pretty open in a way. But this is basically the way. Of course, there is all kind of tricks in between. And uh, now, what about uh, the formation of the employees, the professionals that are working on the video games industry? Uh, do you have uh, universities that are focused at only doing video games, or? Uh, anything specialized in video games? How, how does the formation work? Well, basically, uh, if you think about the Finnish games industry, uh, as I said, I, I don't remember if I said, but it began from the group of the recreational enthusiasts making games without any education to the games industry. The, the demo sceners. The demo scene, yeah. It's known, known in Finland as demo scene. And, and one of the forms of the demo scene used to be assembly assembly gatherings, 5,000 people in the biggest ice hockey arena in Finland still every every August gathering together and, and making games and showing their talents to other, other game developers. So it used to be like that. Uh, at the moment uh, we have education for the game uh, development also, but it's pretty scattered to different places in, in Finland and there is no dedicated school for video game development only. But, but it is usually in the polytechnic, the education is, is usually in the, in the polytechnics or in the second, second degree, degree schools or places like that. And um, how easy is, uh, because I suppose that, uh, that uh, most or, or, or several thousand of employees uh, of the video games industry are coming uh, from outside Finland, isn't it? So how how easy is uh, for the for the local companies for the Finnish companies to recruit talent outside the uh, uh, European Union? Well, yeah, it has been estimated that roughly one fifth, so around twenty percent of, of the employees are uh, abroad, so not they, they are not original Finnish, and and it's easy to recruit people inside European Union, but there is always uh, some difficulties when you are trying to do it outside European Union. And, and once again, there is this kind of bureaucracy and uh, working visas and things like that. And they, if, you, if you are doing it first time, it may, may, might take several months to go through the whole process and there is different kind of things and, and forms you have to fill. But on the other hand, we have some companies who are basically specialized in doing that for, for, for other companies' employees. And one of the reasons that we have this strong kind of relocation industry, if you call it so, is that Nokia used to hire a lot of people back in old days from, from, from abroad and also from USA and outside the EU. So we have this kind of know-how how to how to spin the wheel of bureaucracy. Okay, yeah, and sounds interesting. We we should learn about that, I think. And um how is the community interacting or collaborating uh, through which channels if you have uh, several meetings per month or you have meetings once a while how the community works around uh, all, all the collaboration process well basically uh, one one thing in finland is that uh, of course uh, the helsinki the, uh, or the capital area the metropolitan area of helsinki is the main hub of the finnish games industry and there is around 35% of the companies and around, I would say, 85% of the, of the people working in the games industry are in the capital area. And in the capital area, there is this uh, IGDA, International Game Developers Association. And for years and years, IGDA, uh, IGDA has had it, uh, monthly meetings every month, first Tuesday, and basically they are bar nights. Beginning at seven o'clock, people get in. There might be drink sponsor or something like that. 
people mingle and discuss and see see other people and and, and that's the way basic the basic outline of the collaboration is very kind of simple and non-formal drinking beer it's always good idea beer or wine i prefer wine and myself. sauna uh, sauna comes at some point if you go to slas there is you can't avoid going to sauna by the way or at, at least i can't uh, and, but there is different kind of other other uh, occasions where the people meet. So we are Neo Games is organizing this kind of business uh, business uh, things. And, and for instance, people are meeting at SLAS, People are meeting at assembly. And of course, in, in regional areas, there is their own IT uh, day hubs, and they are meeting regularly also also outside Helsinki. And uh, what about the the myth? that uh, the video games industry is so strong in, uh, in Nordic countries because the darkness and the cold weather. I mean, uh, do you think that this is uh, real? Well, if that was true, it, I think that the best place to develop video games would be North Pole. And I don't, I don't quite think that is the case. I don't believe it. Of course, uh, let's say like this, that when it's, uh, when it's November or December and Helsinki, in Helsinki and it's dark like, like 22 hours a day and there is nothing else to do than sit inside, so maybe you don't have this kind of distractions which you might have if, you, if it's sunny and warm outside. And, and, but I, I don't honestly think that it has so much to do with the... Of course not, of course not. Okay. Well, I, I, I think that this, uh, this has been some introductionary questions, and, uh, and I think that now is the turn uh, if someone in the public wants to make some special questions. So you are almost as quiet as pins. They are shy. Yeah, almost as shy as pins. Or too much party yesterday. Hola. Bon dia. Uh, jo, bueno, jo em dedico al món de, la, de les arts i l'ensenyament i uh, una vegada vaig estar parlant amb tu, Gerard, fa uns mesos i em va comentar que la, la, el món del videojoc està molt enfocat a l'entreteniment i molt a la diversió, diguéssim. I jo crec que es desaprofita un gran potencial que tindria en el món educatiu i que està molt, molt verge, diguem-ne, no? I crec que el món del videojoc es podria fusionar també amb l'educació per aprofitar el potencial que té per donar doncs, als nens o als joves oportunitats per aprendre coses, que et fos una eina educativa. I, i que, li vols que li pregunti? Per què no s'està treballant en aquest sentit? Well, it was a question about so-called serious games or edu games, if I understood correctly. And the question was, was uh, why there is so few companies or so little company, companies making educational games. Well, actually, if, if you think about Finland, uh, we estimate that we have two, that around 205 companies at the moment. And maybe 20 out of them are making educational games solely or educational games all, educational games also, or this kind of, kind of serious games. Why there is no, no more this kind of companies? The reason is quite simple. There is no money in that market. So uh, basically video games companies are usually going to the entertainment games because of the money. So entertainment uh, games or educational games is uh, a little bit uh, or quite a lot different market than the, than the traditional entertainment games are. Usually it's B2B market, so basically the customer isn't the end user, but it's usually some government government uh, office or something like Ministry of, of, of Education or something like or something like that, or school or something like that. And they don't actually, at the moment, at least in Finland and in many, many other countries, they don't have money to basically, basically buy this kind of educational games. And on the other hand, if you are doing the educational games to the consumer markets, you are competing directly against the uh, entertainment games. And it's, it's a pretty bad position for, for a game developer 
to compete against Angry Birds or, or, or Candy Crush Saga or something like that with, with an educational content. So, yeah, I think that the biggest reason is that there is no market, existing lucrative market at the moment for educational game. But on the other hand, I see that there is development going on and there will be this kind of market in the future. It's going to be business to business market or even business to consumer market. But we are not there yet. Alguna pregunta més? Uh, només és que, tot i que he dit que hi ha un suport molt gran sobre, per part del govern, estaria bé potser saber les xifres, perquè em sembla que seria un algú inimaginable. Uh, vull dir, uh, tinc un cert tracte amb, amb empreses i d'allà i em estan dient que cada any hi ha com 500 milions de subvencions de part de préstecs, ajuts per part del govern. No estem parlant de 5-10 milions, 500 milions. Diuen que aquest any potser arriben al bilió, bueno, al bilió d'aquests europeus de, que són 1.000 milions. Eh? Ens podria dir si aquestes xifres són realistes? Mentre tant, si hi ha algú altre que vulgui fer una pregunta, el micròfon que vagi cap a l'estat. So, it was a question about the, about the government funding for, for startups and for companies. Tekes, um, uh, um, which is, the, as I said, the Finnish funding agency of innovation, uh, the total budget of Tekes is around 550 million euros per year. Uh, but it, it uh, and they spend a lot of, a lot of uh, great amount of that money for, for, for companies, not for startups, but for all the companies, uh, companies uh, in Finland. And, yeah, and uh, I would say that the games industry usually, if you take the last 10 years, the games industry has got around, during the last 10 years, the games industry has got something like 60 million euros from, from the guess, during during last 10 years. So it's around six, six millions per year, but now, because they get, they get this dedicated games industry program, Skene going on, the investment is going to be 10 to 15 million per year, 2014, 2015. So I, I hope that this was the answer to the question. Alguna pregunta més? Sí, per aquí tenim una persona que vol preguntar el copy. Um, I, hello, and I just wanted to know if you, if the institutions are suggesting you to collaborate with other digital industries like the music industry because the music is kind of a big part of the video games so i was wondering if you are working together with the music industry or how is it going or are they the creators creating directly and only for the games or are you working with the record labels and well basically this needs a little, little bit longer explanation Although I am the, I'm the director of the Finnish Games Industry Organization, from my point of view, it's all the same uh, in which industry the IP is created. I mean that it's all the same for, for me or for Neo Games if the IP is created in music industry or in, in movie industry, but as long as it's utilized through all these industries. So, so basic answer for your question is that we are doing cooperation when, when we have a chance to do cooperation. We don't compete against each other. In Finland, is 5.4 million people. It would be insane to compete against each other. So yes, we are trying to do cooperation with the music and film industry always when it's possible. Another question here, please. Hi, um, I'm Ola Torres and I work for an advisory company, a consultant. And when we think about how to promote this sector, the gaming sector, one important part of the equation is the formation, right? And when designing or thinking about how to teach gaming, you have to think also about the business kind of 
way of thinking. And I wanted to know if you finish, in final, uh, how do you weigh between the technical formation of the professionals that have to be in the gaming sector and the business part? Does we work like providing this kind of business view to the cultural industries? And I think, what is your view or how you do in your country from the beginning to get this view? Do you think it's important or it's something you can add along the way? You know, I don't know if I made myself clear. Well, could you elaborate a little yes, bit? Because like, I didn't because quite get Now here the we have new grades in gaming, and yeah. we specialize, you know, and I don't know if maybe you have, maybe the technical part is very important, but also to have this cross-sector business view, you know, and I don't know if you think if this is important to have for a gaming professional, you know? Yeah, now I got it. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Uh, well, basically I think that if we think about the games industry, in old days it used to be easy, in a way that we had uh, somebody who, is, who was doing the code, somebody who was doing the graphics, and somebody who was designing it, it and, and that was it basically. But nowadays, if we, if we think about the uh, game, develop, game, game development company, they are quite complex. There is different kind of skills required, and, and there, there, is, uh, there is, in many companies, there is at the moment PR people, there is HR people, there is marketing people, there is uh, monetization experts, there, there is customer acquisition experts, and like that. So, in a way, I, I see still that these these uh, traditional branches are in, are in the very very core of the games industry, but we need more uh, talents and more skills than just the traditional ones if, if we want to make business. When it comes to the education of people, uh, people who are going to work in the games industry, I see that okay, we need to have still we need to have this pinpoint, this spearhead talents, but also them they should know something about the business. And business people should definitely do know something about the game production. And business, uh, everybody should be should know something about everything, not too much, but so much that they know what is going on. But then they should have this kind of spirit talent, which is basically their main mission. And the uh, answer to your question is yes. To some extent, we need this kind of education also, also from the creatives. I would like to make you a question, uh, Kolpi, uh, that we've got through Twitter. Uh, we've got all the time, we're getting tweets, uh, talking about your um, keynote, speaking with Gerard. And uh, Ramon Herrero, a uh, person just watching this uh, by streaming, was saying, are video games in a uh, kind of strategic sector for the economy of Finland? Uh, I, hope, I, I would hope so. <laughs> Actually, actually, I definitely would hope so. At the moment, it seems to be that that well, you all know that Nokia went down and they sold the whole thing to the Microsoft, and, and this, it was <laughs> huge disappointment. We were all very depressed, depressed like two months after that. So, but it means that there is a lot of demand in the Finnish national economy for some kind of new Nokia or something like that, and it's. At the moment, it seems to be that many politicians and media, they see games industry as a new Nokia. It's the second most obvious question I always get, is the games industry new Nokia? Uh, and in that sense, it seems to be strategic, uh, kind of strategic thing for, 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 for the Finnish national economy. But still, I hope that we could see that money, which usually belongs to the strategic kind of things, that we also get the funding to do more inside the Finnish games industry and accelerate it even faster than we have been doing so far. So thanks so much, Colby. Uh, si no hi ha cap pregunta més, eh, uh, s'ha concloure aquesta eh, xerrada amb el Colby Hilton i el Gerard Fernández aquí. Els agraïm i els aplaudim per aquesta estona que ens han uh, dedicat. Moltes gràcies. Thank you, Colby.